Hey, welcome back everyone to our good old patch notes. Going to be doing patch 13.20 today, and of course, as always, we are joined by Drew. Hey, hello. What's up? <laughs> uh, we are recording this on the 10th of October, and planes has started, at, I think, last night, pretty much. Uh, the World's Qualifying Series went, unfortunately. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe that was spoiling, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it could only be spoiling if, listen, no one wants to watch that. It was, it was not competitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was kind of hoping they'd have a better showing, because, uh, of, like, pretty much how they've done all the way up until playoffs of summer, but... I know, I know. Unlucky. Either way. It's okay. Let's get into the patch. Um, you wanna? Should we read this introduction or just go straight into it? Um, let's see. Let's go into it. So this is a. Uh, they normally do. Sometimes they do some weird stuff on this patch because it's the one that's not gonna be applicable to worlds. So, yeah, um, definitely. Kind of never know. Never know what to expect on this one. Oh, also speaking of which, uh, apparently there's a bunch of drops and stuff for watching worlds this year, of course, as always. So. Definitely get those yes. if you can. Um, but yeah, here's a quick overview of everything. Got lots of nice skins. We got some Coven skins back. Let's go. Nice. What the heck? Okay. Old God Mordekaiser. That's hype. Okay. That, that feels that feels like it. Uh, it fits him. Redeemed Star Guardian skins. Let's go. Okay. That was the second group that they were porting from uh, Wild Rift. Oh, is it? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gotcha. That's cool. cool. All right. Uh, we got a Jax visual update, it looks like. Oh. Wow, he's... Okay. I didn't know that was coming out this patch. That's yeah, me cool. neither. Oh, he looks, he looks pretty cool. I like the splash. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to see it in-game, but the splash looks uh, much better than he used to look. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. All right. In this patch, we have Jax's visual update coming to servers everywhere. He still doesn't have a real weapon, but he does have a real weapon. Aha. Definitely freak. Nah, no, just kidding. Uh, yeah. Make sure to give him a try and be sure to drop by your nearest river on the rift to enjoy some fishing when you roam. <laughs> Almost forgot about that. <laughs> okay, uh, you want to start us off today? Sure, let's see. We're kicking it off here in the post worlds patch with Akshan. Your one uh, trick. Yeah, yeah, my one <laughs> trick, of course. Of course. Uh, there. It looks like a couple nerfs. So Q movement speed down, E base damage decreased. Um, so Q, of course, this is uh, not boomerang. It's the Avenger ring. Um, <laughs> but actually, that feels like it's a pretty big nerf. So bonus movement speed used to just be 40% flat. Um, now you're actually going to have to put points into it if you want to get to that 40% because it's cut in half at rank one. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever played Akshan, so I don't know if you max Q or not. But if you don't, this feels like a pretty big nerf. Yeah, I think it depends on the players. I'm not sure what the the highest um, like win rate max is these days, but usually Q if you're trying to clear minions and poke. Okay. So, but so it's not as bad it maybe, but it will it will you'll definitely feel it. Um, and then E, also just some base damage going down. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's quite a... Well, that's a decent amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's that's really crazy. just five on the base, but, like, I don't know. He uses this a lot. That's his main tool for yeah, killing uh, you and such. Yeah, right, because it's... He, how many shots does he get? Like, at first you think it's, like, five on the base, but how many little shots does he exactly. get? Exactly, so, yeah, this could easily be a lot. It, 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 it could definitely add up. So I think I think these are actually pretty pretty big nerfs to option. Yeah. It's interesting. Apparently he's too dominant in lane. I don't know. I haven't really seen him too much, but I think he's somewhat on the strong side sometimes, but generally he's a bit more of a skill champion, so I'm okay with it being a bit overtuned, I suppose, maybe. Yeah. Alright. Uh, moving on, we got Belveth up next. Looks like quite a few changes here. Uh, so her passive is going... Uh, Lavender, Death and Lavender is going... From the bonus attack speed after spell cast is going from 25% to 50, and now it's going to be 20% to 40. So, oh, and it scales uh, using stat progression multiplier instead of linearly based on level now, which is okay. interesting. 
Uh, my brain doesn't understand that for a second. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's just worse now, maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty much. Sure. Basically, yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, okay, and then E Maelstrom, Royal Maelstrom, is going, has a now critical stabby stabs, damage from Bellbest E can now critically, critically strike. Wow, that's really big, actually, I think. Because a lot of times she'll go like Kraken Slayer and stuff like that, so yeah. she'll definitely get some crit at least. For damage sure. reduction. Okay, wow, this is huge too. Damage reduction at the level 1 is going to be 42%, and then scales up to 70%, so you kind of need to max E now, I think. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, That's you, pretty crazy. You really, I feel like she relied on that damage reduction a lot. So. Yeah. Uh, minimum physical damage going from... Uh, 8 to 16 is now plus 66% AD scaling is going 6 to 10 and plus 18 or 8% AD so it's the scaling's up by 2% but it's down by 2% early or 2 early and then 6 late in terms of the the base damage and the phys the minimum minimum damage I mean so that's a bit of a dirt nerf for early game it looks like and then the minimum on hit damage is going from 6% to 8% so that's going up a little bit to compensate a little. But yeah, it looks like it's more going like, it's going to be a little bit more damaged in like mid to late and such. But early on, it's going to be a bit weaker from what I can tell. Hard to say exactly. I don't play her quite enough, but yeah. yeah. Uh, her R in Liz Bank is going, uh, it has uh, the health that she gets on the minions is 40%. Uh, to 60% of minions maximum health, and then 20 to 70% of minions maximum health. So early on, once again, it's weaker, but later it's a little bit better. Middle, it, so level 11 is also down by 5% of uh, minions maximum health. So yeah, all right. And then uh, true form out of combat movement speed, 25 to 75 is now going 10 to 80. So yeah, just pretty big nerfs overall on to. Belveth here. Um, yeah, I think they, I think they like her to be a super late game champion because everything that you just went over seems like they're pushing her. I, I, I actually think she might be maybe. I think she might be slightly stronger, like super late game now, but only, mm -hmm. only super late game because I, I feel like that crit change is really big too. But yeah. it will only really come in once she has a couple items, so mm -hmm. um, Definitely. I think, yeah, she'll just be a lot weaker early game. Yeah, pretty big nerfs on her early game. Looks like she's been dominating early game jungle in higher scale brackets, so that must be why they're nerfing her. Uh, the, don't... the rumor, uh, I don't know if you heard, but the rumor is, from all the scrims at Worlds, uh, is that Belveth is like super broken oh really yeah that that's like the I, uh, they didn't play it her yet in like the play-ins but that's the rumor is that okay. she's like super broken yeah i mean i can understand that i think she's pretty good especially if she goes like the bruisery items that would make sense like yeah. gore drinker shojin type of thing i wouldn't be super surprised but um I'm, I, yeah i haven't really seen a ton of her lately i did see her like once i think but that was about it Ooh, you know, you know who else you gotta play and report back. This is a tangent, but they also say Senna is super broken. Yeah, uh, I did try her out a little bit, not very much. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously she's better, but I don't think she got like it didn't like do a ton for her, unless you're like mid to late game, of course. Okay. Okay. Which her problem is her early game right now. Um, yeah. Which I mean, that's her downside, I guess. Right? She has to be weak early game to be OP later. So makes sense. Fair. Uh, okay, Galio is, um, he was in the last patch too, so let's see what they did this time. W, cooldown decrease, shield restoration time decreased. Um, so on his W, which is the, that's the taunt, right? The shield and the taunt. Yep, it absolutely. Like puts a little shield up and then it taunts. So, uh, cooldown is going to be the same at rank one, and then it gets slightly less every rank until it gets to max rank and then it'll be a full two seconds off the cooldown at max rank um i don't think you maxed w you max q but i'm not sure yeah and i'm pretty sure the q. shield out of, out of combat timer 
Um, shield out of combat timer. I guess. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So you have to wait out of combat yeah, before yeah, you yeah. get the shield back. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. He gets his like little little shield on him. So yeah, yeah. the passive shield, um, same, but then it'll just get quicker the later in the game. So yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I think he's probably in a pretty good spot right now because he. What did they do last patch? I think they took like twenty seconds off, off his the ult. cooldown yep. from his alt. So that plus. I think like his two main abilities that people pick him for are the alt and then like his taunt. So, um, yeah, I feel like these are probably pretty good buffs. Yeah, definitely. I I like this a lot actually, uh, especially the last sentence they said here. It says with the changes, the we intend to make his unique anti mage outputs stand out more and give yeah. him the much needed survivability a melee champion has to get into a close range in team fights he needs. So that's yeah. that's one thing that I had a problem with actually previously playing Galio is I kind of want I need to go in cuz I have to and then I just kind of get exploded a little bit even though my my W is really good to help like it gives you that um magic and I'm pretty sure also physical damage pr yeah. reduction percentage. But um but that's like all you have. Then yeah, and it's also a very long cool. cooldown, so Yep. Um, nice getting a couple seconds off of it and then um, at 11 and on you're getting a four, full 4 seconds um, that you can get your ma magic uh, damage shield back so that's cool yeah no it is good and I think you max that second so um, I think so yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. It's, uh, for, for sure alright I uh, got some jinx stuff alright so we got health growth increased passive bonus total attack speed now stacks Hell yeah, dude! Finally, it's back. Have you have you have you seen the videos with that? It is crazy. I actually have it. You're gonna have to show me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, our cooldown decreased, base damage increased, and the AD scaling is increased on the R as well. So, I uh, got health growth going from 100 to 105. Good. This is good. She's always like pretty squishy. Um, overall, so I like that a lot. Um, passive, it gets added. Uh, stacks on stacks, this 25% bonus total attack speed gained from Get Excited on takedowns now stacks. So that's pretty awesome. So that can be, I guess, first kills 25, second kills 50, third kills 75, fourth kills 100% more attack speed, and then obviously, if you get that fifth kill, it's not really going to matter, but you're going to get at 125% um, attack speed bonus, I guess, of the total yep. attack speed. So, <laughs> uh, yep. Seems yeah, pretty good. <laughs> It's it's pretty it's pretty good. I don't I don't have like a I don't think I, I don't have a big problem with it because there's champions like uh like Zeri now like there's so many champions that just go like crazy like Viego resets like crazy enough. Fight, yeah. So. I don't I don't think it's like as broken as maybe it would have been when she was like initially released. So yeah, for sure. Cool. And she did actually have a stacking ability. She did right. Yeah, it used to actually yeah. stack, not quite the same way. Um, it was completely different back in the day, but she definitely did have a stacking in previously, so it's it's not like it was a super overtuned thing or anything. But I think it's very healthy for her, and it's it's really good. She might get her back, um, not not like completely, but back into being, I'd say, viable right now. <laughs> I don't think she's super viable overall in the current meta, but uh, she's definitely getting back there, and this this helps a lot. So it's definitely pretty good. Um, also, something to notice, I just wanted to mention real fast, is that it's not the movement speed, it's just the attack speed, so mm -hmm. you don't get, like, super zoomies or anything like that, so it's not not quite as broken as it may have sounded. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, alright, so we got the R Super Mega Death Rocket is going from, the cooldown is 75 to 55 currently, and now it's going to 70 seconds to 50 seconds. So, fa 5 seconds off every rank, every rank rather, uh, which is really good, for sure. Um, minimum damage is going, let's see, looks like the bonus 80 uh, percentage is going up by 1.5%, and then it's going up by 2.5 damage in the minimum damage on the base. And then, of course, um, in the maximum damage, that's going to go to 15% more bonus AD scaling, and then it's going to be up 25 every rank in terms of base damage as well, so... Just does more damage. I think that's good. I actually think Super Mega Death Rocket, if you're using this thing close range, 
This thing does like no damage. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it, I, I actually think it's like, it, it, I think mathematically it would probably just be better to do like two autos. Like yeah, auto exactly. Board. That's like, the thing. It, it's You're actually yeah, just so losing it's... damage um, by pressing <laughs> like, R. The animation has the has like a little bit of a wind up. It's like I should have just auto attacked. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely true, and you can all already see like the minimum damage. Like if you were like really close to the person, obviously you're not doing this melee, but sometimes you you might do it. Um, but it's doing zero damage pretty much. Like this is not even an auto attack's worth of damage. Level one, it's like half an auto attack before resistances. So um, obviously you do get that that missing health damage, which is probably where most of your damage is coming from. You're hoping they're low, but um, it's like yeah, execute, yeah, That's pretty much. All right. Any extra thoughts on this one? No, I think it's cool. I like Jinx when um, she is in the meta. Uh, she goes well with a lot of the enchanters I like to play. Um, yeah. So it's cool. I want to. I want to see the. I'll, I'll have to link you the video later. Uh, yeah. The passive. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I want to see it on live because uh, I've seen some like pretty crazy videos, but I want to actually see how like it plays out in a team fight. So. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. I think this is definitely possible she go into pro from this, yeah. um, even though they said it without putting her over the line. I think uh, this is definitely possible. Uh, I think she was already about to creep in, and then this just puts her over, actually. Uh, but we'll have to see. We do have a few months before uh, pro play actually starts in spring for 2024, so we have some time for sure, and they might change this before then, of course. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh... uh... Yeah. Decasante. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you like the summary? You know, yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> everything. They've changed everything. So, uh, let's, let's, let's get into Cassante here. Um, let's see. So base stats, uh, health is going down by a good little chunk. Uh, his growth is going up for health, so he'll probably make up the deficit, but it'll just take a couple couple levels in yeah, the game. Yeah, it's around four or five um, levels from the yep. looks of it. And then he does get more armor as the game goes on. He grows more armor, so yeah. um, nerf early, but stronger late. Uh, passive, all-out bonus damage is... Okay, so it had a lot going on. It was 35% oh. plus it's scaled okay interesting so they're not having his passive like his his damage multiplier scale with um his resistances anymore so yeah wow um i do know that was like a, a point where people got frustrated where they're like oh he builds all resistances and then he just alts and does a million damage yeah i mean that's um, fair i guess but i don't know that's a pretty big hit it is it's a big change to like like, I feel like he'll have to build more bruiser slash, like, damage if he if he still wants to put out damage now. Yeah, so, maybe. Interesting. Uh, Q and Tofo strikes. Um, what are we doing here? So, recasting the third Q will now disable. Oh, I heard about this. Um, this this feels like, like really um, maybe, like, niche, but apparently this is going to really change up his play style. Um, so you can't, the third Q is what pulls people into him. Yeah. Like after he has it stacked up and now you can't, uh, flash during the animation, uh, which apparently was like a really big, uh, way people, uh, like caught people off guard basically. So do you know if this means he can flash before, like, yeah. So I guess he can flash before and then cast it. He just can't. Yeah. Like basically like, queue it up, queue flash. Yeah, exactly, you can like buffer it. That's apparently because I was talking to some people who play Cassante, and that was um, that's what they were saying. You like would start the animation, and then as it was casting, you could flash forward, and it would it would catch like people off guard. Yeah, I've definitely um, seen them use it in pro play a lot, so that's interesting. I actually feel like we we saw them do it. Yeah, in like play-ins. I feel like in mm -hmm. one of the matches yesterday, someone did that. So apparently, it's like a really common thing that Cassante players do. Um, yeah, they can't do it anymore. So wow, that's big. I like that though, honestly. Um, yeah, well, because it's hard to counterplay for sure. Um, there are also just some high 
guess I wouldn't say all the way gutting the damage. What is it? 50 to 30. But the base for especially early, is, yeah, it's big. Yeah, yeah, it, it gets better. It smooths out and gets like back to normal as you put levels in the queue. But it that plus the base health nerf, I think, will be a lot weaker. Like yeah, level one, though. level one that's really bad. Level two that's pretty bad. Level three of it, which is gonna be what like level five, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually not too bad. And then when tw at level four, that like gets us or not at level four of the rank, so you maybe like level seven or eight is not bad at all, honestly. But yeah, it's pretty bad early. Uh, all right, let's look at W. Uh, oh wait, so shift tool tip now shows your progression on armor MR. Okay, it's just like a little tool tip, uh, like a quality quality of life thing, I guess. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. Um, all right, they have W here twice. I like that. They have W here twice. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this guy's complicated. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get into W numbers, the, the first W. Uh, is, we got Pathmaker, just the normal, normal, normal variant. Um, <laughs> mana is, okay, it's just uh, cheaper. Costs less mana to cast this. Wow. Um, is this the thing that makes him unstoppable? Yes, and he gets okay. uh, resist, like, percentage uh, damage reduction yes. from it as well. Okay. And stuns. Uh, and it does damage. And channel, maximum health damage. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, so middle and channel time. The middle and channel time is unchanged at one second. Oh, the maximum channel time. Uh, um, it's middle and channel time. So he can't just tap this now, basically. Okay, you used to be able to just, like, snap it. Like, click yep. it and it would go off. Okay, yep, yep. so it's got a bit... Actually, that's so that's like half a second. That that could definitely make a difference, um, for sure. Yeah, uh, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but but it definitely could be. It's big. Um, the damage, crowd control, dash distance, and all other outputs will no longer be tied to the ability's charge time. Okay. Oh, okay. So so it's not going to be like the longer you hold it, the more more stuff it does. It's just not related to that anymore. Interesting. Um. Damage reduction is going. So the flat damage is going up, but they're yeah. removing the the scaling, like the yeah, passive. Yeah, the scaling is again. That's so. This is. I feel like they're trying to almost force him out of just building like tanky. Is what full tank. Is like. <laughs> yeah, like forcing him down like a bruiser path. Um, so yeah, the resistance scalings are gone. Um, the stun duration. Uh, that's it's flat. I feel like that's probably good because it's just the flat 1.25. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of a nice little buff. And then the damage that it does is going up by a lot. Let's see. Did they take any scaling out? Because it says two. Now it is 20. So it just did max health damage previously yeah. of targets max health, and now it does all of this. It has a base, it has oh, a scaling of geez. AD, armor, magic resist, and max health. <laughs> oh my god, we need to get a Cassante like, expert on this uh, on this episode, because what the... So okay, the damage is going up by a lot. I think it much. is, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because the other one was relying on the on the target being low to like maximize the damage you could do, and now you're just going to be doing more damage regardless of your target's health. Hopefully, I think. Uh, no, that would be like current health. So this is like max health, so it doesn't matter what the health they're at, pretty well, much. Well, it doesn't matter. It's the same. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh god, Cassante. Yeah, well, it's a... wasn't enough. Uh, <laughs> let's do it again. Yeah, but let's do it one more time. One more time. He's got the all out version. <laughs> So this is when he's alting. Um, yep. So let's see. Channel time is still basically it's it's so it's got that minimum cast time. It's still yep, a yep. little bit faster. Um, same thing. It's not tied to how long you cast it. Um, damage reduction is so basically all the changes from above are there. They're just like tuned up. So the damage reduction is fifty to seventy five. Uh, and when he's in his normal W, it's 40 to 65. 
all out of extra damage. Well, all out, Pathmaker will no longer deal extra damage aside from the bonus ID. Interesting. <laughs> so all the damage amp you're getting from alting is coming from your passive now. You don't get any additional stuff from here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the cooldown is down by quite a bit, actually. Yeah, wow. All ranks. Like four seconds, um, basically. Yeah. They're, I feel like Six I, early. I, I think they're just like, this is going to completely change what people do with this guy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're not done. Yeah, we got one more. All right. Okay, so it's <laughs> ultimate ability. At least we didn't have to, we didn't do anything to the E. So that, that's the, they lied in the description when they said every everything. Changed. All abilities suggested? Yeah. Come on, man. Where's the E? Unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> so all out. So max health threshold um, is up. So 65%. So you can do it uh, so a little bit sooner. You don't have to be. Uh, knockback distance is a nerf. 300 um down 50 timos of distance <laughs> uh, damage on initial cast is interesting so it's up but it's also unless that's a typo which i don't think it is that's it, now it scales with ap yeah of ad interesting it looks like and then same with uh damage on the wall slam the damage is down, but the A, it's again, it's an AP scaling ratio instead of an AD ratio. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Uh, um, so attack, reset, timing has been slowed down to match Cassante's base form. Uh, casting all out will now reset Q, current stacks. Okay. Interesting. So if you had something stacked up, you won't have your stacks anymore. Yeah. You start building them back up again. Um, bonus attack damage used to be five flat with scaling. Now it's 15, 30, 45 with a little bit less scaling. And healing is probably. It's probably just better, the healing, unless you were really stacking health. Because before it was 10% flat with a little bonus per 100 health, bonus health, and now it's just 10, 15, 20%. So I think it's just more reliable on that. And then Cassante gains a bunch of attack speed, which I guess he didn't have before. <laughs> it's gaining 25, 35, 45% bonus. Wow. Um, so... He's not a completely different champion, but I don't think you can even remotely build him the same way you could build him on the patch prior. Yeah. That's my my non-expert, non-Cassante playing opinion, I think his build path is going to have to completely change. It's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. I don't. The AP scaling on the alt is throwing me too. I'm like, yeah. I'm like in my head, run through items. So, I mean, a lot of tank AP. items have AP in them, but yeah. like, yeah. actually, maybe not that many anymore. They used to. Um, some of them definitely do though. But yeah, that's weird. Cause he does have some. He has quite a bit of AD scaling also. Yeah, so I'm trying to think like why. I don't know. I <laughs> bruiser tank got. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Someone figure it out. Someone, someone he just does a lot more damage, from what I can tell. Um, and he's a little bit more fair in terms of his Q and W BS that he was doing before. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that is. That's like a whole passion that's in itself. Yeah. I mean, we're done. Okay, let's go. <laughs> No more time. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't got no more thoughts about that. Yeah, I don't know. That's. I mean, we're gonna have to see how that works out because that's pretty, pretty large. Oh yeah, and then I'll just get like. Expensive. <laughs> I had to read. I had to read. Uh, oh, essay. Yeah, go ahead. What, what did they do with Kaisa? 
they uh, they they lowered their armor by three. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> You're doing Paisa and Milio. I, I'm in. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, she used to be the best Sadie, in my opinion, but now I think uh, not quite there anymore. So I'm kind of surprised they're still nerfing her, but I guess um, she's still blind pickable in a high skilled play or something. So I don't know. I don't agree. Ooh, um, I actually think there's some pretty strong counters to her, but I think she is somewhat on the strong side, so I guess it's reasonable to nerf her armor, but wow, that's that's a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, who do you think um, is stronger AD-wise now? Well, I think Zaya mostly countered her. It, uh, it can be a skill matchup, but overall, um, Kaisa has to run into Zaya, and Zaya likes to kite back, so it's kind of just like... Like Zaya, yeah, and from players. what I heard from everyone, Zaya was the best. So, um, kind of surprised they did it hit Zaya a few times, but I don't think they were too too bad. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess three armor isn't too bad at the end of the day, but that's you're getting auto attacked quite a lot, and at least in lane, if not the whole game, so yeah, definitely hurts her a bit. I think Zaya is still the strongest. Um, but some other ones are creeping up a little bit because of the nerfs to both of them. So, interesting. Uh, unfortunate, I think, but it is what it is. <laughs> she does have a, a decent amount of HP, base HP, actually, though. So, um, like, she has a little bit more than other ADCs usually, so that's that's okay, I guess. But yeah, um, go straight into Melia, shall I? <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we got the passive, uh, which is passive. And fired up. <laughs> um, oh, the passive of the passive. I see what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Um, on fire. Burn damage now counts as Melio's damage even when applied through allies, allowing it to interact with a select number of items like Hextech Putrefire. Okay, yeah, that's good. Burn damage will still grant the ally who applied the debuff the kill, preventing Melio from accidentally kill, st kill stealing. I mean, confirming kills. And okay, that's fine. I think it's good. Kind of quality of yeah. life, um, a bit. And then E warm hugs is going from the cooldown being 18 to 14 seconds. It's now going to be 17 to 13 seconds based on rank. And then so yeah, it's one second off every rank. That's pretty nice. On his uh, that's not campfire now. No, that's the shield. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's his shield. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's and then the shield strength is going from it used to be 60 to 160, and every uh, depending on rank, and now it's 60 to 180, so an extra 20 at the end there. Um, of course, scaling through the ranks, it gets up uh, a little bit every rank at past the first rank, so that's pretty pretty nice for him. And then our breath of life is going from looks like the base is unchanged and it's just getting plus 20% AP on the scaling of it, so. I mean, that's pretty large, but um, I'm not sure how much AP do you build on Melio? Is it... He doesn't He doesn't stack that much AP. No? Um, okay. I mean, it'll definitely... Maybe like 200 like, in a game? Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't get... It'll, it'll help, but um, it won't be like crazy broken. Yeah, that's about um, an extra 100 healing-ish, depending on yeah. stats. stats I, think, I think more healing on the alt feels good because... Um, it, it feels sometimes it'll feel too like niche otherwise if it doesn't have good healing ratios because that's true yeah uh if you're not into like a cc heavy comp you you don't really have anything to cleanse so uh, yeah that makes sense that's nice okay cool all right morgana morgana let's see what they're doing uh i feel like they haven't touched morgana in a long time <laughs> like i haven't seen her like at any Elo for a while. Yeah, it's been um, a minute. Let's see. W AP ratio going up. Oh, I see what's happening here. Damage to monsters increase. <laughs> uh, e cooldown increase early. R movement speed increase. Stun duration increased. Magic damage increased. I wonder if they're looking to potentially send her into the jungle again, but let's see. Um, uh, Helping out her mid lane and jungle. Yep. Okay. There you go. So <laughs> they're just adding in uh, damage per second 
its ratio is up ever so slightly, but she does get a good amount of AP. So even that three additional percent will definitely help. Yeah. Uh, does more damage to the monsters, so she'll quit camps faster. Um, so that's nice. The I don't think the black shield cooldown is the biggest nerf. It's like down two seconds at rank one, and then you recover by the time you get to max rank. Um, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. And then soul shackles, you get just more movement speed. Five. It used to be five to fifty-five percent. Now it's ten to sixty percent in all directions mm, um, actually that's nice that's actually kind of nice because it used to just be when you were running towards the people you were tethered to so now you could actually pop it and then zoom yeah, out you just get there, movement like speed away. as well like yeah so that's nice um the duration of the stun once the tethers pop that is gonna go up so pretty much still 1.5 at base but then every the second level up and the third level up, you'll get more stun duration. And it just does more uh, more damage. Yeah. Both base and scaling. Uh, this will still hit twice upon initial cast and a second time when the tether stuns. Cool. So, yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know if this is enough to get her, like, but, uh, like, really back to being played a lot, but I feel like it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, they just made her W better, her R better, and honestly, I don't think you were really like spamming Black Shield whenever it was off cooldown. So I don't think like two additional seconds at rank one is uh, yeah. is like a very big nerf. So I'd yeah. say it look, it's good. Definitely hurts quite a bit because it's like it's a it's a very important ability and it already has a very long cooldown. Twenty five second cooldown is a uh, quite a lot of time. That's <laughs> like yeah. What else? Almost what else half a minute. That? I'm trying to think what else is that long. And yeah, I guess that is that is quite a bit. Yeah, I think Ezreal E is pretty long as well, at rank one. Uh, yeah. it's somewhere around there. But um I know like Milio, we were just talking, his like campfire is pretty long. Is it? I okay. Yeah, but like Black Shield, yeah, I I I'd have to play some games with her, like a, a bunch of games, but yeah, maybe it hurts more than I think it does. Like it'll be on cooldown when I really need it now. So. Yeah, like like they say here, they're increase or increasing the cooldown to give CC ports more windows to interact with her, which yeah. makes sense. I do think it's when you're playing CC like Nautilus or something, it's more gone. It's like, well, I can just never go in. So <laughs> <laughs> I can understand it a bit, but um, yeah. yeah, that hurts her a lot. Although I think I I don't know exactly how much damage this you know, number does, but I know this ability does a super crazy amount of damage if you're standing on it for a while um it's, it's like we were saying with the um who's the first guy the akshan like his e buff like when you just see the number it doesn't seem like a lot but you have to remember it, it ticks several times so yeah you're gonna get damage every it, second plus yeah. it's scaling so like i guess every few hundred ap so if you're getting like Let's just say percent. Pretend you have like 400 AP. Um, let's see. What is what's 15% of 400? A lot. 15. Mm -hmm. 30. 45. 60. Yeah. So it should be 60 extra damage just from 15% AP. So you're getting an extra like I don't know numbers. But anyway, that's quite a bit of extra damage, and it's per second as well, of course, like you said. So. Um, and, and you have to remember her like combo is basically that Q I mean, typically she wants to hit you with the Q and then like so so you're probably gonna take if, if she pulls that off you're gonna take like the full typically like the full duration of yeah. the fix so yeah it could it's definitely gonna hurt I I am certain about that for sure all right and I, yeah the ult's pretty nice changes for sure I feel like people get out of her ult pretty easily so. Definitely nice to have the extra movement speed. Um, and I mean, even extra damage on it is pretty big. Alright, I uh, got Quinn up next. Some small changes here. We just got the base stats changing. We got base health going, uh, it used to be 603, and it's now 565. So that's like 40-ish. And then 
Wait, right? Yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so. and then uh, movement speed is going down by five, so that's pretty big also. Attack damage growth is also going up, it looks like, 2.4 to 2.7. So point, point 0.3 um, attack damage growth being changed there. Uh, it looks like... I don't know. I mean, it's definitely nerfs, I'd, I'd say. I don't think the growth is really worth the extra stuff that she's losing. Base movement speed is pretty big change, uh, stat to change. So I think overall a nerf, personally. Um, but yeah, any thoughts? So, probably, yeah. Yeah, um, they're saying that she got... She was getting incredibly squishy due to build changes after all UM updates. Mm. Um, but then when they tried to like compensate her, they went too far. So interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't see enough Quins to know if she's been like really, really busted, but I don't think she has been. And I do think this is probably just a nerf overall. Yeah, for sure. I feel like kinda doesn't feel very good, but we'll see. Um all right, we got Zed up next. Do you want to do Zed? Yeah, I'll do Zed. All right. Zed. W cooldown increased. Um so that's his living shadow and let's see it is staying the same at rank one actually and then it gets progressively a little bit longer than it used to be at every single rank um to the point that yeah when you max out w it will be a full three second increase on the cooldown so let me see says yeah. most Z players max Q and then E. W max second is currently, oh, while most Z players max Q and then E, W max is better and is growing in popularity. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So they, because more people are maxing W, they're increasing the cooldown to kind of counter out that, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it's just a bit too strong. From what we yeah. can, what we can tell, um, or uh, basically they just want people to also have the option of doing E more than than W, I guess. First, of all, I, I guess I max E when I play him, which is not very often. Uh, second, but <laughs> I guess W is the better one. So my bad, <laughs> my bad. Yeah, yeah, they're saying Q and the W, not Q and the E. Apparently, is the way to go. Mm. All right, and then we got Ziggs up next. Uh, his explosion hitbox is going up by 30 range there. So uh, I did take a quick look at Freak's uh, preview of the patch, I think, and then he said that basically this is not like a larger ability. Like it's not actually going to... Exp- okay, so how do I explain this? <laughs> um, basically, when it lands, it like explodes, right, in the area, and it will now be in a 30, 30 range larger area of the actual explosion wherever it explodes at. But this doesn't mean that everywhere it bounces on the way, this is 30% lar- or 30 range larger to actually get hit. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the... Yeah, yeah so when it actually explodes, not when it's... Like, not the actual abilities, like, hitbox is getting uh, that larger. Makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. That's not as crazy as I thought it was. Yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> So yeah, uh, it is actually pretty nice, but obviously it's not as, as crazy as some might think, if that makes any sense to anyone. <laughs> yeah. Let's get to the items. Ooh, a couple item changes. The Blighting Jewel. So this is a component, not a not a full item. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's see, they nerfed it in the Great Jesus. The Great Durability Update of <laughs> 12.10 that we all remember. A while ago, um, yeah. So it was nerfed during that update, um, and as a result, it is now underpowered. Uh, we don't think it needs to be weak, but it still shouldn't be an item players are comfortable sitting on without upgrading all the way to Void Staff. Okay, that's. I was trying to remember when I buy this. It is when I'm building into Void Staff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just making it cost a little bit less. Uh, it's down a couple, what hundred, like hundred and fifty gold. Yeah, definitely pretty nice it's like uh you know it's the ultra or it's alternate item for uh uh or the opposite item i guess of last whisper basically so it's like 
has a little bit of uh, reduction in there. Magic, redu magic uh, reduction. Magic resist reduction, sorry. <laughs> Not too bad. Cheaper items for everybody. No yeah, I think that's fine. No big deal. I mean, definitely definitely nice for people that are buying forward staff for sure. Uh, but yeah, all right. A Dust Blade of Drakthar is going... I'm changing it again. <laughs> They uh, love to. It's God. Wait, did they not put a? No, I, I think it was on the last patch notes too. I can't remember, but this is on every patch notes. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, it pretty much seems like it. Um, I think it actually is. Yeah. Uh, ability haste going from twenty to fifteen now, so it's going to be five uh, ability haste less than previous, and then a bit damage amplification is going from 0 to 18 percent to 0 to 16 percent um, based on their uh, enemies missing health at 0 to 70 percent missing health missing health rather um, so yeah just getting nerfed once again that's fine I, I don't think this item's that good anyway um, from what I heard people they're gonna be nerfing this and buffing you moves or something so we might see you move a little bit down and so or even if they aren't buffing you moves then like Yumu's is also a really good option for assassins. Basically, too many bruisers and things are buying this, and it's not what they wanted on. They wanted on assassins. So, <laughs> yep, pretty much. Any thoughts? Um, no, they just hate this item. And <laughs> I think they should just uh, figure out what they want to do with it. Like, at, yeah, at this point, just delete it. Yeah, pretty much. Because they just change it. Like I, I feel like they're doing like small changes every time, and it's just they're never happy with it. So true. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see. Probably more to come. But Yomus is fun. So yeah. Uh, all right, Lord Doms. Yeah, LDR. Uh, let's see the Giant Slayer passive. So it is a very slight nerf i think it's zero to 25 percent increased physical magic damage against targets with more health or more max health and now it is zero to 22 percent so it's uh at the top end just going to be doing about three percent less increased damage um and update it math the passive giant slayer now applies before shields and life steal are calculated um, I think, I don't know, I don't know the math well enough. I think, uh, it might just be the same. I'm not <laughs> sure. Because I feel like it's going to do more damage because it's not worried about shields and lifesteal, but then they proactively nerfed it a bit to compensate or something. I'm not sure. I think it's yeah. going to be the same. You're still going to build it when there's people who have a lot of health. That's yes. It. Yeah. <laughs> it was really weird hearing Freak explain this, and I still was kind of confused, but um, it says the current damage amplification from LDR's passive Giant Slayer was calculated as pre-application, meaning it triggered after things like shields and lifesteal. In this patch, we'll be moving it to pre-mitigation, which should be more intuitive to how players think about it and use the item. Since this will result in a power increase for the item, proactively nerfing it, uh, giving it a small nerf rather to avoid overpowering it. So basically, they think this is going to be a, a buff, and he said that it was going to be a buff, so they're pre-nerfing this just yeah. a little bit. Compensation. Yeah. So. so in theory, it'll just probably be exactly the same. Yeah, pretty much. I actually think, in my brain, I feel like this is a nerf, but um, that's, we'll that's see. That's what I was thinking, too, but I, I'm like, maybe my brain just doesn't understand. Yeah, I think possible. that's probably the case. <laughs> it's definitely possible. <laughs> all right, and then you move. Yeah, all right, you move Ghostblade is going uh, from the Spectral Th Shard Lethality is going from 3 to 12 in level 7 to 18, and now going to be 7 to 18 at the same levels so I'm pretty sure this is the buff for when it's active so it's actually not the base lethality of course but it's when you activate the item you get uh, plus six more lethality at level I guess level 18 right so yeah pretty pretty nice yeah. definitely uh, actually I mean you get plus four at level one too so or level seven I guess rather so it's pretty good yeah no it seems good that plus the nerfs to uh, dust blade again. Yeah, so pretty much all assassins flip on over. This is your best item now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nah. Changing it up. <laughs> oh my god, they're removing smite. 
this. Uh, finally. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, finally. Now, now we don't have to worry about forgetting it. Uh, uh, all right, what are we doing to Smite Riot? So we're updating Smite to make it more user-friendly. If your cursor is on top of a large or epic monster, it will smite that target. Just Okay, just like it always says. However, if your cursor isn't over an allowed target, it will automatically target the closest monster within a small radius. This means strong voice can still smite dragons or bearings, even with a massive Cho'gath in the way, by <laughs> simply moving the cursor off to the side. Um, okay, I think that's probably fine. It just makes it easier to... So it, it, yeah, it prioritizes epic monsters if you miscast it, if you cast it on yeah. top of nothing. Yeah. Which it's is kind of interesting. It's valuable for timing to matter, but requiring the aim is not something <laughs> we want to subject junglers for. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I will, I will say, like, it is... I don't see it as much on Baron, but it is, like, kind of crazy. I, I, I feel like it happens more when you go for, like, a steal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, the whole enemy team is clumped up in the pit. Yeah, and you ha you're like, oh shit! I smite at the I smite at the the eighty carry. I wanted to smite the Baron, so I think it's like better. <laughs> I, think, I think it's definitely better. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna like make it. I don't think it's gonna dumb it down. I guess is my point. I think it'll still. Yeah, I think it's still fine. But uh, damage to champions pets, forty at all levels. Okay, so it just does more damage early and then less damage late if you're smiting champions mm -hmm. or like maiden i guess or yeah maiden. like tibbers stuff yeah, like that tibbers. uh close only counts on horseshoes hand grenades and epic smites smite now has a 350 unit of range forgiveness okay so that's specifying the range so mm -hmm. what's uh 350 that's that's pretty decent right yeah, it's pretty pretty large. Yeah, so that's pretty forgiving. Um, damage type is no longer a spell; it's a proc, so it will no longer trigger spell effects. Similar to ignite, and then primal smite, AOE damage when smiting monsters. Fifty percent of smite damage to a hundred percent of smite damage AOE. Um, okay, I mean it is still just going to be smite, but it is. I do like that change. Um, I don't know. You you sometimes play jungle too. Do you? Are you in favor of it? You think it's gonna make it too, uh, like too easy now to smite, or what do you think? Uh, I feel like it's a bit of a nerf to smite. Like the damage to champions definitely. Yeah. Uh, less, which I think is fine though, because I don't think really most people need to be uh, smiting champions anymore. I think it was a cool thing a yeah. few years ago, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not the main reason anymore. Um. And I think the forgiving thing is probably not going to matter much in lower elo. I think it's more high skill bracket where it could matter a bit. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's really nice, but it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, but the fact that they're changing it from the spell to the proc right now for like T-Bonic Embrace and stuff like that is actually pretty big, actually. And I think it's a quality of life type of thing, but uh, it's also a nerf, I'd say, because you can't apply T-Bonic Embrace now by smiting someone, you know? Yeah pretty yeah. pretty cool um and then of course that's just like nice quality of life but like actually a buff so yeah pretty cool i i don't have any problems with these i don't like jungle <laughs> yeah yeah same 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 <laughs> uh all right more yeah, we got the jungle companion upgrades. Now we got removed all primal smites. Jungles with primal smite no longer take 20% less damage from epic monsters when uh, two or more allies are nearby, so they didn't remove the Primal Smites, they just removed the 20% less damage uh, taken from Epic Monsters um, when two or more allies are nearby. So you don't just take de less damage when you are all uh, five manning Baron or whatever, you know? So, yeah. We're going to take the full damage. Uh, Gustwalker movement speed while on a brush gained 45 bonus percent bonus movement speed, decaying over two seconds after leaving the brush. Um, killing a large monster increases this effect to 60% for two seconds. And now it is going to be, while in a brush, gain 30% move, bonus movement speed, which is down by 15%, decaying over 2 seconds. After leaving the brush, killing a large monster increases this effect to 45% for 2 seconds. So down 15% in both areas. 
um, in terms of bonus move speed. And then the Moss Stomper shield is going from 60 to 281, and then it's now 180 to 300. So wow, that's pretty big. I feel like this is the most common one too, so a little surprising. But it says levels 1 to 18 here, and now it's 10 to 18. So maybe you don't get the shield until level 10? Maybe, yeah, which I think is probably... Five. Yeah, I'm not exactly yeah. sure about that, 100%. But it's either that or a typo. Maybe it's a typo. Could be. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, all right, and then uh, Moss Stomper tenacity and slow resist is now removed. And Moss Stomper will no longer grant the user tenacity or slow resistance. So wow, that's yeah, that's definitely a nerf. So I guess that's probably a compensation then. So this is fine because they removed the tenacity and slow resist. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, all right, it's still pretty big though. I think. Um, Scorch Claw damage type requirement is was any any damage and now it's only attacks and spells. This means that Smite will no longer trigger Scorch Claw's slow and burn. That's interesting. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's some some big jungle nerfs once again. I think. All right. Um. Thanks. You want to you want to ping pong this or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. What is uh. Is it consistent? Yeah, let's see. Alright, they're just changing they're changing uh they're changing camp health. So with these changes we're looking to slow down clears after the first clear. Uh, with level one and two being identical, the biggest addition here is that the health now scales past level eleven as champions continue to gain damage. Um okay, so interesting. It um Oh, okay. actually, it's actually a simpler a simpler change than having to read each camp. But basically, in the old way, old jungle, at level eleven, that was the strongest the jungle camps would get. And so, obviously, once you're like level fifteen, sixteen, you're gonna be like cruising through the camps. Um, but now the camps are all scaling all the way up to level eighteen, so it will not be quite as fast. Like late game to just go in and, and steal camps or clear camps i think is, is kind of the idea yeah wow that's a lot it's of help just like a, uh, yeah it's like hard on paper to just i i feel like this will be more of a like you'll feel it and know how big of a change it is definitely once, like once you play a few games but I f it could be pretty significant um where it's not going to be easy to just like full clear late game yeah and, and... take a few extra seconds yeah. or so probably yeah and it can all interesting okay and then we'll see how the scaling formulas okay so it's just a bunch of information feel free to check it out if you want i'm sure freak does a, a breakdown once he does the the patch video i don't think it's out yet but the preview was out at previously so uh yeah interesting all right and then we got rift scuttler uh, it's saying it's an important objective, which means it has, needs to have an appropriate amount of health for its value. Its rewards also need to align better with other jungle camps, since other camps only scale in, in experience, while Scuttler increases increases in both gold and XP. We've adjusted Scuttler's rewards to now scale more slowly. Um, so health is going up by a lot later. Um, base is the same though. Gold given is going up by a decent amount uh, later. And then experience given is also going up by a decent amount later. And it's also changing to non-linear scaling instead of linear scaling, so interesting. All right, monster attack damage and champion clear health. Oh, fun. <laughs> so they're just like, they're just, this is what I mean, like the, the post-Worlds patch, they start to like kind of, I would say go off the rails, but they definitely start trying more. Uh, like they would never try this stuff for a patch that was going to be at a major tournament. Mm -hmm. But they definitely start to try and tweak some stuff or, or like change how the game works at this point. So uh, um, they're trying to. So the goal of this change is. We have a few goals here. We're trying to limit the degree that junglers can fully heal from a short trip to their jungle, capping the pet heal per second and converting the monster kill heal into percent missing health. Should keep junglers from easily healing back up to full. Um, 
Okay, interesting. So they don't want junglers to just be able to like life steal back up off the mm. camp or two. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they're also updating the scaling rules for the jungle pets. Uh, okay, all right. So it's, it's missing health. Yep. So sustaining jungle there, and then yeah. cap healing for second. Yeah. So they just um. That's interesting too. Um. We, I, I'll have to see how it plays out. Cause yeah, gonna it's a heal, lot of numbers. <laughs> they're going to heal less per camp, and they're going to clear camps slower, in theory, past like the first two clears, is what I was saying. So, mm. it could be... I'll be curious if it impacts what champions get played or what they have to build. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, the jungle will be interesting. Definitely an interesting thing to mess around with. Yeah, this patch drops. for sure. Uh, Anti-poaching adjustments, going a bunch of stuff again. Looks like small monster armor and magic resist is now going to be 20 and it was zero. That's interesting. The large ones are also getting armor and magic resist buff. And jungle item bonus damage to non-epic monsters is going to 42% from 20%. So you're doing more damage to monsters now. Okay. If you have the jungle if item, obviously. You, if you have the jungle item. So it's probably trying to uh, dissuade like laners from taking camps from junglers. Yeah, pretty much. Because without the jungle item, then they're just going to be like tankier. Yeah, yeah, this means I'll have to lane minions a bit more. Exactly yep, so, what you said. Yeah, the, the camps are harder to kill without that jungle item. For sure, yeah. Um, lane minion experience. So this is probably vice versa. Uh, we're protecting junglers, so we're also protecting lane minion poaching. So, uh, minion experience penalty is going up. Uh, minion experience received is going down by 10% <laughs> initially, um, which is pretty big. And many experience family is no longer locked when the jungle item is finished. So, um, yeah, I guess. I mean, this isn't going to mean that they're not going to tax your lane, but it just won't be as beneficial to tax your lane. It says overall, these changes are amount to roughly 8% less minion experience than they give today for early and mid game. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it will mean they don't tax your lane. Like, it's just more. It's just more efficient for those minions to just go to the the laner at this point yeah yeah that's definitely what they're trying to do and then of course um this is like a interesting thing that freak went over it's kind of hard to explain but you can go check out his video if you want to go into details there and then we got starter item buffs here we go Ooh, okay everybody buys these Let's <laughs> take all champions can only buy one doran's item okay, okay. no stacking okay, okay. All right, uh, Doran's Blade's going up to 10 attack damage and 100 health now. It's from 8 attack damage and 80 health. Doran's Ring is going uh, from 15 ability power to 18, and health from 90, 70 to 90. And Doran's Shield's going from 80 to 110 in terms of health, and then the regeneration when damaged. Um, let's see, 0 to 40 health over 8 seconds is now 0 to 45 over 8 seconds. Maximum is unchanged at 25% remaining health. Okay. okay. Uh, dark Seal, stack friendly. Dark Seal is not unique with other Doran's items, so feel free to pick both up. Good. That's That makes sense. Um, okay. And then health is going from 40 to 50 on that, so at plus 10. And then Relic Shield, um, it's going up by 2 AP and 20 HP. And Steel Shoulder Guard is going up by 180 and 20 HP. And then Spectral Sickle going up by 180 and 25, or sorry, by 15 health more than it was. And then Spell Thief's Edge also getting 2 AP and 15 minute more HP as well. Pretty big, nice, pretty nice. nice, nice. <laughs> Love to see it. And Water Walking, uh, it was too fast. <laughs> compared to everything else it was too good so um they have given it more uh adaptive force so it's going to do more 
uh, give you more bonus stats based on level, um, at least early on. So it's instead of five, it's going to give you 13, which is quite a nice little increase early. And then the movement speed is down by a lot. So that's yeah. kind of there. Give wow. and take. Movement speed is down to 10. It used to be 25 when you were uh, in the river. So Interesting. Yeah, I feel like most people were just being used up for the extra move speed in the river, pretty yeah. much. But um, yeah, that's quite a bit of a nerf to the movement speed. So I do like them adding more adaptive force to it, though, because I feel like it was a little bit lower before. But I mean, that's quite a bit, honestly. Thirty to thirteen to thirty is quite a bit. So that's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, snowballing adjustments. Uh, that's a lot of text. I'm gonna not read any of that. Um, <laughs> basically, what from is, what I this is freak. This is freaks patch. They would just let this guy do whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. Basically, they're nerfing those. all the dragon buffs and stuff. Um, I'll go through a few of them for sure, but we're not yeah. gonna read all the text walls. Um, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Cloud Drake's going. It used to have seven percent slow resistance and out of combat move speed. It's now going to five percent. Hexdeck Drake, uh, 7.5 ability haste and 7.5% bonus attack damage is going to 5 ability haste and 5 attack damage, 5 bonus attack damage rather. Um, Infernal Drake, 5% to 3% in terms of attack damage and ability power. Mountain Drake, 8% to 5% in terms of bonus armor and magic resist. And Ocean Drake is going 2.5% um, missing health to 2% missing health. So pretty big big nerfs especially in terms of i'd say like the bottom three um i mean all of these i think are pretty big i don't think this is too too bad but still a bit but yeah i mean this one's i guess not so crazy but it's, it's certainly something um but yeah huge nerfs any thoughts on that before i move on or uh no no i think i agree with you yeah the only one that isn't too crazy is probably the first one the cloud one so. yeah um, I feel like it's why unnecessary. Really offer. <laughs> we believe there's room for the amount of stats. Uh, they just think, uh, okay, yeah, interesting. I didn't think like they felt overpowered, but I guess. Yeah, they are buffing the souls in uh, contrast to this, of course. And interesting. So yeah. Individual dragons are weaker, but the souls are more. Yeah. Beneficial. Okay. Exactly. So Cloud Drake's going from 50% bonus move speed to 20%, and then uh, the soul, of course, of these. So the Hextech soul is 40% uh, base slow, 30% for range champions is now 45% base slow, and 35% for range champions. So plus 5% there, plus 5% here. Um, Infernal rank 80 base adaptive damage for explosion is now 100, so 20, 20 extra base adaptive damage on the explosion there, and then the mountain soul is 180 base shield after not taking 5, sec five seconds, uh, damage force 5 seconds, is now going to be 220 base shield from 180. And then Ocean Drake uh, was 130 base heal and 80 base mana regen, now it's 150 base heal and 100 base mana regen. Actually, I didn't know the exact damage on, or numbers on that, that's interesting. But yeah. Yeah, I don't think I did either, actually, now that I see those. That's cool. Okay. Uh, so yeah, obviously they're buffing the souls. I still think it's pretty rough on the drakes, but I guess it's not too bad since you can stack them a little bit. But yeah, it's kind of it feels kind of rough. Um, Rift Herald's local gold given is going from 200 to 100. So when you kill it, and uh, you can share that between however many people did kill it. So um it's a lot less da less gold uh they used to they actually buffed this previously i think it was 50 um originally so they had buffed it before because people weren't taking it enough i think something like that or, or either that or it was because people thought that the gold was like pretty much worth nothing so they just wanted to make it more valuable but now they're nerfing it down um yeah. Yeah, and then the Baron Nasher's base health is going from 12,600 to 15,000, and the health scaling of 180 health per minute is unchanged still, so that's just the base start health at 20 minutes. Um, so, a little tankier. yeah, basically they're saying if we take we kill Baron way too easily, people were doing Baron at 20 minutes quite a lot, so um, they wanted to make sure that that wasn't as easy to take, and it was more of a time consume, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Death timer adjustments. Um, 
it was so level one death timer was six seconds now it's six seconds unchanged level two death timer was eight seconds now it's six seconds level three death timers it ten, was ten seconds and now it's two or eight seconds and level four death timer was 12 and now it's eight level five 14 and 10 level six death timer was 16 and it's now 12 level seven was 21 now 16 and then level eight was 27.5 and now it's 21 and then level nine timer is was 30 seconds and now it's 26 so you're just out on the map quicker pretty much so um you can't get quite of a much of an, of an advantage um from killing someone i guess earlier on or you can die you can get back out to die quicker so that. <laughs> yeah that. that's yeah. true that's true it's a quicker recall actually if you die level one you're or oh, level two you're it's quicker than than churning your uh, your recall. Exactly. So. What is the math on that one? That's just that's just yeah, it just makes sense. Sounds like they're incentivizing inting. I don't know. Um. <laughs> Damn. Freak has lost his mind for. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then the worst thing of today. No, I'm just kidding. Um, turret plating gold per plate is now going from 175 gold to 125. So. Oof. That, that hurts. That is kind of sad. That is kind of sad. Yeah. And and in theory, with the um, I don't I, yeah I feel like that plus what we just read the death timers um, I don't know if it mess up but I'm just thinking like, it'll be harder to take all the plates in theory because people are gonna get back to lane slightly faster. Yeah. And even if you do get all the plates, you get less for it. So yeah, those two change. Those like last two changes we just went over combined, or feel like a pretty pretty sizable nerf for laning. Yeah, and RIP any uh, split push teleport demolish uh, champions yeah. like Volibear and um, sure. what was the other ones? Scion. <laughs> yep. All Ziggs, right. Tristana, people who don't pick up powers. Yeah, I mean they already get tons of resistances just after you take a uh, a plate, and then on top of that, depending on how many champions are around, it even gets more resistances. So, yeah, it's pretty rough. Uh, oh, it's going. They're going ham on this patch. Let's see. Runes <laughs> as well. Nothing is safe. Not even runes. Um, <laughs> no. They're saying. So far, we've talked about targeting gold access, so access to gold. Um, these adjustments target how effective gold is in the rune system. The goal is to reduce snowballing by decreasing gold scaling built into the rune system. This players get plenty of power from item and experience speeds. Um, okay, so conqueror damage is nerfed per stack and attack damage yep this is nerfed uh per stack and then at max stacks it is also nerfed so this damage is down on conquer um yeah. all across the board uh lethal tempo damages what oh no sorry attack speed that's lethal tempo so it is also down um i don't know what they're talking about access to gold they're, i think they're just nerfing all the runes i think that's what they're doing <laughs> um because they just nerfed lethal tempo attack speed as well both melee and range um interesting interesting and electrocute they i think it's still a nerf it it does more base but they nerf the scaling quite a bit um i'm not quite sure how that lines up with what they say about the gold <laughs> um, do you know? Do do you know what they mean? Um, I'm sorry. Were, you were on le electrocute, right? Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just reading. So it just seems like they nerfed conquer tempo and electrocute. Yeah. But they're saying they want to nerf uh, how effective gold is in the rune systems. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, not... But it looks like they're just like nerfing the overall effectiveness of the runes. So. I don't know if that's like the same for the rest of them, but yeah, I think basically they're saying like you know, ten ten attack damage was worth um, three hundred fifty gold, right? Oh, okay. So I think I think that's okay, what they're yeah, talking yeah. about. Um, Got it. But yeah, yeah. I mean, so they were saying nerfs. like runes were, if like on just a pure what they gave you sense, they were more valuable than like items or anything else, just 
ratio wise. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they're just trying to bring it down the body. Okay. That, yeah, it's, that makes sense. Thank it's you. rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is rough though. So 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 far, yeah, conquer attack uh, all damage on conquer is down. Yeah. Tempo, the attack speed's down. Electrocute the base damage is up, but the ratios are like significantly down. So yeah, I definitely. Think it's an overall nerf. Um, let's see. Dark Harvest is 20 to 60, plus 5 per soul. Now it's 20 to 80, plus 5 per soul. But yeah, the ratio, again, is down 10% instead of 25%. Um, so I think that's probably a damage nerf. Arcane Comet, same story. Base damage <laughs> up, but ratios are way down. Um, okay, I don't think these two are actually too, too bad, actually. I think I don't think they're as bad as... Any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Dark Harvest one especially doesn't feel too bad, mm -hmm. but and the Comet one doesn't feel as bad, but yeah, the, the first three feel brutal. Yep. Um, summon Airy, base damage goes up. Wait, this one feels fine. This one feels fine. Because Summon Airy, I think you're normally, that's the one I buy as like an Enchanter support, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, actually, I actually don't mind the AP scaling down a little bit for just more flat base damage so mm -hmm. that, that makes sense fine. uh and the shield yeah i feel like that feels fine too the shield is up base damage or base shield wise and then again the ratios are down a little bit but i think the users with summon area weren't really building other than you know what other than there's like weird builds where you have like jarvan summon area so <laughs> i think the supports are not gonna mind the summon area changes yeah i don't think it's too too bad I mean, it's definitely yeah. pretty large though 22 percent to five is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you're not building a lot of AP, that is that is kind of uh, yeah, kind of a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, Oriana will stop building this side. Of, uh, I mean, running this rune. Yeah, I blame Oriana. She did. <laughs> uh, fleet is, yep. Just uh, that's another pretty big nerf. Twenty percent AP down to five percent AP. Thirty percent AD. Ten percent AD. Uh, first strike, that's that's fine. That feels like the least aggressive one. It's just down one percent through damage. <laughs> um, Ace of Blood. Ace of Blood. I'm trying to remember. It's uh, just damaging an enemy champion. You get a healing. Yes, it's still it's like the the vamp one. Like yep, yep. Healthy. So healing base up, but eh, doesn't feel too bad. It's not it too bad, but and three percent. So yeah. It's not too bad. I mean, it's definitely a nerf, but in comparison to some of the other ones, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. not too, well, too bad. <laughs> That's runes. really rough, they though. They just called runes out back and said, we're, we're getting rid of them. <laughs> Jeez. Pretty much, yeah. This is rough. I don't I don't like this, to be honest, at all. Um, no. But, oh well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. All right. Well, uh, rely more on your items now, I guess. <laughs> yep. um, Aram adjustments are going. Yep. We're just. We're not going to read that. You can read it though. It's really short. Uh, behavioral system. So following up on the ranked restrictions, we do introduce blast patch. We're going to remove the ability for Aram and rotating slash event game mode games to count towards reducing the rank restriction penalty based on player feedback. So Aram and rotating event. Uh, game modes will no longer count towards the five game ranked restriction penalty. So once you get, um, I think it is, yeah, well, basically once you get like penal penalized or whatever for um, typing in chat, like toxic things, stuff like that, um, you have to play five games of like any, it used to be any mode, but now you can't use ARAM or the game modes um, to like get that done quickly, basically. Makes sense, I guess, because it's supposed to be like a punishment per se. So yeah, it, like, and you have to play full like full summoners Earth games. People were, from what I heard, were like running it down or like AFKing kind of in those those matches as well. Mm. So it was a pretty bad thing. You didn't have to win the games from what I from what I understand. You just had to to play them. So oh, that would be interesting if they forced you to win five eight rounds. Right? Yeah, I know someone said that, but apparently they don't want to do that because it's a little too rough or something. Rough, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically, quality of life for the ARAM players, uh, for people that play just ARAM a lot and stuff, people were complaining a lot about these people being 
pushed into their games now, these toxic players. So I like this. This is good. They shouldn't, I think it is, yeah. shouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. All right. Ping adjustments. Take it away. Yep, yep. They're just... Uh, uh, they're basically following up on the changes from last time where yep. they made a lot of the pings uh, only viewable. Like when you pinged like stuff on the scoreboard or stuff about champion cooldowns, stuff like that, it was only viewable for yourself. Um, now they're making it so those are also visible to like a pre-made party as well if you go in. Um, and then 10 seconds after a champion takedown, all allied scoreboard pings are visible to your team. I think that's good. Um, because hmm. people know, yeah, uh, that someone has been taken down. Uh, the bait ping has been replaced with the enemy vision ping, and the hold ping has been replaced with the need vision ping. Interesting. Uh, I like the need vision ping. Yeah, I don't I use that one enough. Ping. No, no, I kind of like that one. Yeah, I need to use that one more. But yeah, that's nice. And then the vision cleared ping. And the vision ping wheel have been removed. Yeah. yeah so they're just combining the two vision wheel, the ping yeah. wheels rather, into yeah, uh, makes sense. same thing. Pretty good. That makes sense. Cool. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think uh, this is like so after you get like a, a takedown and then yep. you want to be like, hey, I now have uh, so and so seconds on my ultimate or something maybe, or yep. or I only have yeah, a, yeah. like five percent mana and now I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can tell my teammates that I'm out of mana. Yeah cannot continue yeah, yeah like it's just uh useful, I think. useful stuff i think yeah all right of course world's clash is going uh october 9th is when it starts opening to you can like fill your team and the 14th and the 15th of october are when it's going to happen and it's going to run on patch 13.21 so nice. looks like that'll be next patch then uh yeah. got a bunch of stuff here feel free to look if you want got some extra extra win stuff it looks like probably extra rewards um because of it being the world's clash which is cool uh, mythic rotation shop rotation uh got some new stuff here ayo ayo nice nice <laughs> your favorites prestige yeah. ocean song seraphine love to see it in case you didn't have it i'm pretty sure you do yeah i got it <laughs> Uh, actually, I like the Dark Star and Malphite one quite a bit, so that's probably pretty cool. Got the Neo nice. J Pax Jax as well, the Lux one, okay. Then leaving the shop, you got the current ones are going away, so get, get them before you, while well, you can, if you are trying to. I think I actually picked this one up already, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think I did. All right, and then we got the bug physics fixes and quality of life changes. This video is running a bit long, so I'm not going to go through any of this stuff, but uh, feel free to pause or read through it if you want. Uh, stuff can be pretty important sometimes. And then, of course, we got our, our main reason we're looking at the patch today. None of the changes. <laughs> yeah, forget uh, the changes. It's all about the skin. Yeah. All right. Now, we got uh, World's 2023 Redactions coming out. The redeemed Star Guardian Rakan and Zaya. I think I have the base, the original ones, so definitely a chance that I'll check those out to see if that's worth grabbing for me. Coven Nami. It's a new Nami skin. I haven't seen that in a bit. Yeah, Nyla yeah. skin. Okay. Pretty cool. It looks pretty cool on Splash for sure. The Coven Akali looks pretty sick also. Um, Elise is pretty alright. Pretty alright. Spider looking pretty cool. Old God Mordekaiser looking badass got the prestige yeah. coven akali looking completely different from the base no i'm just kidding yeah, good. uh definitely looks pretty cool though um uh, yeah we've got neo pax jacks coming out and that guy's just there <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the he always looks like the fisherman one he does yeah he fisherman skin does. and then of course if you want to see him in game you get a little preview here I'm sure skin spotlights would be the best place to go though if you wanted to check out the details and stuff but yeah, Covenant Collie looking not too bad. The world's one's looking interesting. Oh god, Mordekaiser. Not too bad, not too bad. Nemesis Jax. Getting some chromas, it looks like. And then Mecha Kingdom's Jax getting some chrome. Oh, he, no, they're getting the their, their visual update, and that's what it is. 
Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Visual update. Yeah. I almost forgot about that. So Mecha Kingdom's an Empyrean as well. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he has yeah, more skins than that, though. The, so. the first thing on the patch notes, and then we had to go. It was a million. Yeah, it's like an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We this did bad it. boy. Yeah. All right. So um, hopefully we have some. Hopefully Jax looks pretty cool. I've, I'll have to check him out in game for sure. But uh, yeah, that's been the patch so far. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Drew. And <laughs> that should be it for us today. Uh, thank you all once, for, once again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next patch. Peace.